I'm a, a professor of surgery in the Pelican Centre in Basingstoke, which is a surgical teaching and research centre, which grew up really as a result of uh, my work on what is called TME, or Total Mesorectal Excision. And that is uh, something which will almost certainly be on my gravestone when they finally put me under. It, uh, it, this is the guy who invented TME, because you will see it in every uh, rectal cancer discussion, you will see those letters discussed, uh, and we have, as usual, have been discussing some aspect of TME. Well, they, they chose for a debate a uh, um, provocative title, which was Partial Mesorectal Excision is Adequate for Rectal Cancer. Uh, that implies that many people, are, when they remove a rectal cancer, are actually dissecting through the surrounding fatty and vascular envelope which surrounds the rectum. And the whole fundamental principle, really, of good cancer surgery, certainly cancer surgery that cures patients in substantial numbers, is to remove a block of tissue which can predictably and effectively encompass the whole field of spread of the cancer. And uh, at least three quarters of uh, all rectal cancers have to some extent spread into the surrounding fatty tissue. And by good fortune, because of the way the good Lord dis, uh, designed the human body, um, the gut is a midline structure starting at the mouth and ending up at the anus. And when you're a fetus, it comes, most of the gut comes out of your belly and goes back in again. When it goes back in again, it folds itself in a usually predictable way and leaves around it what I have called holy planes. And, and they're separation zones which a, a, a surgeon can see and dissect in. So this has given us a huge opportunity to plan our surgery and plan whether or not preoperative chemo and radiotherapy are going to be relevant by being able to visualize on a good MRI scan. You will have seen there's a lot of MRI discussion at this meeting, uh, all day uh, workshops going on all the time on uh, the use of MRI in rectal cancer and colon cancer to some extent, but especially rectal cancer. So we can see where the surgeon is going to divide the uh, tissues and live with the block of tissue, define the block of tissue that he will remove, and that will be a total mesorectal excision, or in the more upper rectal tumours. You see, we define the rectum in most countries as uh, the lower 15 centimetres of the large intestine. Colon finishes, doesn't really finish, runs into the rectum and that's, uh, the muscle is slightly different at 15 centimetres and that has arbitrarily been chosen as where rectum starts. Uh, in, in fact, most of the cancers in the upper third of the rectum, above about 12 centimetres on a sigmoidoscope examination, um, it's perfectly okay to divide the mesorectum uh, perhaps five centimetres below the cancer. And that way uh, you um, clear all the spread. But if... Uh, the cancer is in the usual place, in the middle third of the rectum or in the lower third of the rectum, then the careful removal of the whole rectum, TME, uh, becomes crucial with a huge difference between uh, the best results which uh, keep the local failure rate, the local recurrence rate down to, say, 5% or thereabouts, uh, one in 20 only, hopefully, getting a local recurrence or even less, um, 
And if you don't take the trouble or develop the skill, it's not easy, this. It's difficult surgery, and this is one of the problems. And the lower you go uh, in following these planes to remove the lowest uh, part of the mesorectum, the more challenging and difficult it is for the, for the surgeon. It's very inaccessible, the bottom of the pelvis. And this is one of the reasons why... Oh, 40 years ago or 30 years ago, it, about half these tumours were not cured by surgery but regrew in the pelvis. Well, if you're a patient being wheeled to the operating theatre or even contemplating an operation, there is a very large number of decisions that will get made about you. And if you're a switched-on patient and you want to know that you're getting the best, it would be a good idea to talk to the surgeon uh, or the oncologist and ask what the pros and cons are for preoperative chemo and radiotherapy. That's the first big decision. And the second big decision is, will you have a, an anterior resection in which the anal sphincters are preserved? And if so, how good will the function be afterwards if you have both radiotherapy and um, the sphincter-preserving TME operation? Uh, and then when you go to the operating room, the question of whether the nerves on which your sexual function depends, whether they will be preserved, that's another question that you might ask. What is your experience, uh, Mr. Surgeon, of uh, uh, recognizing the nerves on which my penile erection depends and ejaculation? All of these nerves are wrapped around this TME specimen and therefore the dissection between the mesorectum, the TME, and the um, wrapped nerves has to be very precise. And it also has to be done by modern electrosurgery in most people's hands, um, which is capable of damaging those nerves. So the details of the electrosurgery, another feature of TME. It's why I seem to uh, keep on working forever, because there are so many aspects of the TME story which are constantly developing. I've mentioned already MRI is now being refined so we can see exactly the anatomy of all these issues. At the Pelican Center, we're trying to, we put a substantial amount of money into trying to create a computer model, uh, a three-dimensional computer model of the true anatomy of the pelvis with all these nerves so that we could uh, possibly one, of the, one day, with enough backing, financial backing, we might be able to produce simulators for this surgery. And therein is another series of new developments where TME... Uh, is in the front line. Should we be using the new uh, robots? The Da Vinci robot can be used to do a TME. The laparoscopic surgeons have been, well, they were probably only the last 10 years, the more skillful laparoscopic surgeons have been extending their um, surgery from First of all, early on it was only benign conditions and then they did cancer of the colon and now the skillful ones are doing TME surgery laparoscopically. Well, all of these things require a training and judgment and to get good simulators would be a, an amazing step forward. But I think it's going to cost a lot of money and I'm not sure where we get the money from because there's, although there's a lot of money in cancer, there's not a lot of money in surgical research and surgical development. We, in fact, provide something like 90% um, of the actual cures of cancer, and we get less than 1% of the money spent on cancer research. So, you know, that's quite a beef for surgeons. All the money is in the other side, uh, in the chemo and the radiotherapy and so on. Um, but not much in improving the thing that makes the most difference.